<laughs> this is so good. This, this room of people, I told them to go up and meet someone and rather than to meet them normal, to go up and meet them like as if it were their childhood best friend or like someone they've known since childhood and just go up and, and be that way. <laughs> there was a lot of tail wagging. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. All right, we're here for astrology and psychosomatics. Um, I will try not to drop you viewers at home. Let's make this happen. So this should be a good lecture. This is one of my favorite lectures to give. So I think that uh, you will enjoy it. Get your birth time, text your mom if you don't know your birth time. Uh, and let's see how it goes and how long my uh, battery lasts. Thanks for being here. Okay, so now that you've gotten their phone number, now that you know everything about them, <laughs> you can have lunch with them after class. <laughs> <laughs> okay, share with me, how was that different? Uh, so different. So different? I mean, it was normal for me to meet my friends that way and tell them I need to eat now. Yeah. <laughs> they just came to me and said, I'm hungry, let's go eat. <laughs> and you were like, you're forward. <laughs> okay, very good. What else did you discover? You find common things immediately. You find common things immediately? You lost touch, that's funny. Okay, very interesting. So you, you have your horizons open to the commonality rather than the difference yes. between you, yeah? That's kind of amazing. All right, what else did you discover? Very good, it made you smile. Yeah, there's no way that I couldn't smile when I saw her like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, yes, yes. So my wish for you is something that I have welcome often in my life, where you'll meet someone new, but they're just at the same level as you of receptivity to life and everything that is, rather than going around with programs of fear and like, you know, an anxiety-ridden conversation with themselves. Come. Come everyone, make yourself comfortable in whatever, whatever, everything. Whatever you want, make it happen. Um, so rather than coming from that place of, of worry or fear or apprehension or self-doubt or self-censoring or wearing a mask or whatever it is, they come with that, ah, you know? And you're just like, oh my God, I can't not love you. <laughs> yeah? So. Yesterday, so this is building. I don't think any of you have been to all three lectures because I think yesterday, the first one, yeah, we had some people who went to the first who are here today and people who, a lot of people yesterday who are back, so welcome. Um, so it's a building on itself. So, so anyone who's matured from day one, you'll realize that on day one, we were working on taking off that mask, finding out what is behind your thought or what is behind your question. Yeah, what are you really wanting? And we talked about this a little bit yesterday with setting boundaries and realizing that how we show up dictates our experience. And um, yeah, coming from curiosity and compassion, coming from that yes rather than the no. And I don't want to like use too many words or get too kitsch when it comes to like self improvement, empowerment things. Like that's not that's not my desire at all. I made a Tony Robbins joke yesterday though. That was funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it's just like, it's magic to be able to feel this. And I know that we're at a yoga festival where it's much more common. And when you go back to the office, if you go up to your colleague and you're like, ah! <laughs> it would be a little different. But if you can come with the same sentiment, so, so keep what's in here and change the hand motions and the tail wagging. I saw lots of tail wagging. It was so good when you came up to hug each other. There was so much tail wagging. I wish I had it on video. But uh, welcome, welcome. So this essence of like that just abundant love, my challenge to you, so first homework of lots of homework, and you, most of you have been here, I give lots of homework, is to actually use this, experiment with it, yeah? And, and have it be an experiment for you. Everything I do and everything I teach, whether it's health or whether it's yoga or whether it's psychology, or psychosomatics and astrology, it's all about experimentation. I have no desire for right and wrong. I have no desire to tell you this is how it is. Follow this paradigm, do this, you'll find success. My only desire is to give you parameters for experimentation so that thereby you can become a scientist in the own living laboratory of your body and your life. 
right? So make experiments. Do it with three different people. Two of the people go up with the tail wagging and one go up normal. And notice the difference in experience. Of course, your variable here is the other person. <laughs> so, so it's not like a super clean experiment. But if you do enough of this, you'll start to see the data thread. And you'll start to be able to interpret and understand that how you show up will dictate your experience with someone else. And, and there are times where you're not going to want to show up. Right? You're going to want to be in your own space. That's okay. <laughs> it's your mindfulness over the difference and your mindfulness about what you really want right now. Like I love the, when, when I had you go as your friend, right? Immediately he's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's stating a need he has. Yeah, whereas normally he would just like swallow his hunger and be like, ah, what's your name? What's your job? Where do you live? What's the weather? Whatever it is. And so in, in like fiercely engaging in this depth with life, uh, it, it's magic to, to just kind of put our fingers on our own pulse of how truthful we're being to ourself and the situation and our body yeah? or how much we're bypassing and spiritual bypassing is something very real in the yoga community and the world at large today um, not actually going to do the deeper work of, of what's really going on here <sighs> Anything, any, anyone else wants to share? Any questions? Silence. Oh, silence. The silence is good. All right, so many of you have come in since we've begun, so welcome. Um, my only rule is that you're happy and comfortable, so if that means you need to leave, that's cool. Like, I have no attachment to you being here. Um, I love you, and I want to serve you. And if you want a chair, there's some up here. I'll give my chair up for someone if you want. Um, you can make a friend and sit on a bean bag, whatever is comfortable. Go against the wall, just be comfortable, be happy, give yourself a foot massage while we're talking. Yeah? Be in your body, drink some water. <sighs> so we are here for, I think, an hour and a half, <laughs> I think, yeah, probably, to talk about psychosomatics and astrology. And those of you who were here at the beginning, you heard me say that this is actually my favorite lecture to give. Um, because it is, it, like, this is my worldview, and this is what's real. Um, and this is when we can take all the esoteric things and make them a science. So what we'll do first is I will define for you these two words uh, from the perspective from which I'll speak. Yeah? <laughs> oh my god, I love you eating a banana, and I love you eating it without the peel. This is the cutest thing, everyone. You must see. She's like super professional monkey. <laughs> Yes, yes, <laughs> uh, it's fantastic. He's hungry too, so what you want? Go get a banana. <laughs> That's the normal thing I'll tell my friend the minute he sees Oh, but you're not actually hungry. <laughs> so it's an escape vehicle. The, the I'm hungry is how's the weather, yeah? Yeah, totally. All right, <laughs> so the snack people are there. Visit them if you want. For now, we'll talk about psychosomatic. So psycho, you know what that means? If, if you have it alone, then someone's psycho, they're crazy. But if you have it as a root word, it's referring to the psyche, the human psyche or the mind, the way that we interpret reality. And really, at the end of the day, the conversation that we're having with ourselves, which is something that I've thread throughout all three lectures this weekend, yeah? Welcome, come on in, make yourself comfortable. So um, I give you guys in the back, you're now the welcomers, anyone else who comes in? Be like, come sit next to me. Okay, good. So, psycho, our mind, our worldview, our interaction with everything around us. Somatic, that's a good one. Anyone know? Soma, yeah. Embodiment, in the body, the touch, this feeling of like knowing. It's, it's visceral, that's a great word. It refers to being in the body itself, in this human experience, yeah? So, Psychosomatics, where do we go from there? It's from the psyche, things happen in the body. Yeah. So literally, psychosomatics refers to the manifestation of ease or disease in the body, stemming from, coming from, the conversation that we're having with ourselves. You see that? Super important. Super, super important. Okay, welcome committee. Welcome these new people coming in. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> There's snack people over there. Everyone's best friends from childhood. <laughs> so good. It's like our island theory from yesterday. If everyone else died and only we lived. Uh -huh. All right. So I am um, I'm opening this up to record this, and I am live streaming it so that you guys can. I know someone came up yesterday and said that they wanted their brother to um, listen. So like all this stuff is accessible. And I'm recording this for uh, a podcast. I have five years of a podcast online about this stuff and health stuff and other stuff and whatever stuff. And it's really helpful for you guys to be able to go forward from here and immerse yourself in a new worldview. And um, not that it's my worldview, it's just one that opens yours. Yeah, and new ways of understanding and seeing the world and your body and everything like that. So I'm going to pass around uh, cards that have links to all those things. If you got one, you can pass it on. And we got through half of the title thus far. <laughs> so psychosomatics, the conversation we're having with ourselves, our worldview, how the story we're telling in life, the story we're telling ourselves every day, will have a manifestation in the body. So from the first day, do you remember the psychosomatic example that I gave? And the specific yes. disease we talked about, you remember? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Welcome. So we talked about, come, come closer, come closer, come in. Come, we're all best friends in here already. So, yeah, good. You're just, you're not part of that. So we talked about breast cancer. And this is a really triggering one. Who knows someone with breast cancer or someone who's had breast cancer? Okay, you're lying to me. Who knows someone who's had breast cancer? Most of your hands should be up, yeah, huh? You're like, oh, I have to think about them. I forgot about them. <laughs> so a classic one, and I'll quote again, Sri Sri, Louise Hay. If anyone's heard of Louise Hay, she is the grandmaster, in my opinion, of psychosomatics. Um, she has a whole translation of um, ways that you will manifest the conversation you're having with yourself in your body. And so first and foremost, is actually uh, disease. That's what happens when the conversation you're having with yourself is not benevolent, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so the psychosomatic connection, and this is for you guys to understand psychosomatics, with breast cancer is something called resentment. So some, a, a lot of you English might not be your first language. Do you understand the word resentment? Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult one to define. It's a word where, where you are kind of bitter about things, where you are um, in a way... Self-sabotaging yourself. Yeah, love it, self-sabotaging. But it's like, you, you feel like you've been owed something by the world and someone's not doing something that supports you. Like it's a very kind of mother archetype thing. <laughs> yeah. A shadow side of cancer, which is the astrological archetype of the mother, is resentment. And so, um, yeah, this, I mean, this is big. So now think to that person that you know that has breast cancer. Can you see, and like this is really triggering to people, if anyone in the room has had breast cancer, like I acknowledge the triggering nature of this. <laughs> but we only get somewhere to deep work once we trigger and open that wound, yeah? So I'll go on. Think of that person that, that has breast cancer that you know. Do you see that they're running a story in their head or that conversation with themselves that is somehow wrapped around resentment? Yes. Oh, I see some like knowing looks like, oh my God, that's so true. Yeah? And this is really hard stuff to admit. To take full responsibility for our health is acknowledging the field of psychosomatics. Because it's saying everything I do, everywhere I go, and this was day one, epigenetics, what we discussed, Every individual I interact with, every situation I put myself in, how I show up, whether I show up with my mask on or with my mask off like I would with my friend from childhood, all of that indicates what will show up in my body, ease or dis-ease. Yeah? And so to take that fervent responsibility is very different than what the field of allopathic medicine and Western science, which is mainstream modern humans, have been telling you that oh, don't be a victim of cancer. You know, have you seen how disempowered people come when they get cancer? Why me? Why me? You know, when in fact we see, I, I can tell you on a clinical level, that cancer manifests in the body 20 years before it's ever seen in a laboratory. 
We all have cancer. It's just a matter of how much we're taking care of it today. And so that's how my career got stolen into detoxification, yeah, using some super potent modalities. And on the first, first day, we talked a lot about this, so you guys can get on the Facebook page. That's on that little card that you passed around. And you'll look at the videos from the past few days, and you can re-watch it or play it as audio while you're working out or whatever you want. And really start to embody this. And a lot of the podcast is about this as well. Taking responsibility for the cancers and the tumors that we have growing inside at all times. How are we living our life? That's what epigenetics is about. Yeah? And then the other part of that is the conversation with ourselves. So, you ready for the second half of the title? We're going somewhere, I promise. <laughs> We're halfway through the title. So, astrology. Who's heard about astrology? Mm -hmm, pretty much everyone. Who thinks astrology is some hippie science that's like really like, come on, all Aquarians experience this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, no one's raising their hand. That's why you guys are at the lecture. Everyone who doubts it isn't here, which isn't helpful because normally what I do is I take people who doubt astrology and show them that it's scientific, yeah? Because I'm a scientist. Everything I do is based upon logic, reasoning, testing, data, and really understanding the bigger picture. And astrology is such a magical science. It's my way to hack the human psyche. You know, you can come up here and show me your chart, right? And all of a sudden, I know everything about you. I mean, I love you, but I know everything about you. How you express that imprint is dependent upon your conversation with yourself, all right? So uh, essentially, if I had a thesis for this entire lecture, what I would say is that when you do not know yourself, and mind you, yoga is self-knowledge. True yoga is self-knowledge, that's it. It's how well you know yourself. How well you're aware of this conversation you're having with yourself. All these asana and the poses and whatever, the leggings, those are just distractions, right? That's modern yoga, that's how we commercialized it. But like yoga is self-knowledge. And so in this space of understanding that if you do not know yourself, right, or if you are not aware of this conversation you're having with yourself, disease will show up, right? And it's like, you don't need to be like, oh my God, disease is going to come. I'm so scared, right? It doesn't have to be like that. It's just a super simple, it's time for us to get real about the conversation we're having with ourselves. Welcome, welcome. Sorry. Ah, I don't want your sorrow. I want your love. <laughs> Yeah? So there we go. Astrology is a very powerful way of self-knowing. And uh, just to define and, and summarize astrology in my way, because I know that you guys know it from the horoscope columns, which are, that was, that was the way to commercialize astrology. Just like leggings were the way to commercialize yoga, or asana was, yeah? And so the horoscope column is just referring to your sun. But essentially, when we look at a natal chart, and I can pull one up for you, when we look at a natal chart, we're looking at uh, all of the planetary positions at the moment of your birth, okay? So does anyone know where the moon is right now, for example? So this is my astrology chart. Yeah? But this is just an example. So this is actually a good time. If you want, uh, go ahead and get out your phone. I know I just asked you to get out your phone. <laughs> Don't do all the other things that are distracting because I know that you want to be here right now. I have your fervent presence and we're going to hold that. But download an application called Time Passages. Yeah? And while you're at it, also download an application called The Pattern. It just came out for Android, so I'm very excited. So time passages, one word, and the pattern. Both of these apps will guide us in life, and time passages will guide us in this class. Okay? You find it? Anyone having trouble? Don't check your messages. <laughs> Is it not showing up for Android? Yeah. Okay, try Astro Gold, or there, there's a number of them. If not, you can also go on uh, astro.com in your browser. It's not an app, but it's good enough. Astro Gold. You got it? Okay, or astro.com. Okay, so spend the next minute inputting your date of birth, for those of you who know your time of birth, for those of you who haven't yet text messaged your mom. Do that. Yeah. Like, 
Astro.com, yeah. And in the top right, you'll see something that says My Astro, and you can click on My Astro and then enter your birth data there. That's the easiest. Okay, who's having trouble? Yes, the pattern says social networking, but it's completely astrology and it's based upon my teachers. Yes, he exploded it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. I've just solved your whole life. <laughs> I mean, I haven't, but the pattern has. Yes, so that's astro.com. So let's guide you through astro.com. Uh, so anyone on astro.com, you'll go to my astro at the top right. Click it. They'll make you sign up, which is fine, or you can also go go down uh, and create a horoscope immediately as a guest user. You saw that? Yeah. yeah? And now I understand, because I want you to explain things. And then put your name and then your birth place. So you're all pulling up your chart. Doing this at home as well? ASTRO.com. Can you multitask? The women in the room are like, yes, the men are like. <laughs> <laughs> so while you're doing this, I am going to have you look up here or look there and just listen. What this is, again, one more time, is a map of the sky at the moment of your birth. So all of these symbols around the outside are the actual constellations, all right? They're the stars in the sky. All of the small symbols on the inside are the planets, exactly where they were positioned at the moment of your birth, okay? This has a magnetic imprint upon you. So experiments have been done with little mollusk snails in the moon cycle, looking at the fact that they'll always go in the same pattern. And when you magnetically change it to make it look like a different moon cycle, they respond. So they are responding to the magnetic field. So there's no real scientific translation of astrology, right? I know from case studies and the fact that like within five minutes of an astrology reading, I can make someone cry because they feel so deeply seen because for once someone outside of them is speaking to them the depths of who they are, right? And the thing is, and this is my thesis, is that there's a perfect prescription of human that's dosed out in different cultures all throughout the world. Right? You have to be this to be a good girl or to be a good wife or to be a good husband or to be a good man right? or to be a good child, whatever it is. There's this perfect prescription of human. And all of us, what we do is we've tried to constantly compare our ingredients to that perfect prescription and see if it fits. And the ones that fit, we amplify. And the ones that don't fit, we depress and hide. Yeah? And yet the thing is that in reality, there is no perfect prescription of human. There are all of you unique imprints on the world here for your unique purpose, your unique karmas and dharmas, these things that only you can figure out. No one else can. And if we spend so much of our time trying to be like that perfect prescription of human, right, we lose ourselves. And so that conversation that we're having with ourselves then is not so clear. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. We good? So this is what psychosomatics are. The fact that if we are not expressing this imprint, this map, that is our responsibility to live out and explore, then we will develop disease. Right? And disease can be a great teacher, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but the more that we know ourselves. Right? Self-knowledge, yoga. The, the easier and more fun life will be. So I get a lot of questions all the time on like my Facebook page and public outlets like, Andy, are you always this happy? <laughs> like stuff like that all the time. And, and it's like, I mean, no, of course not. There are times where I'm doing deep self-work or I, I come to a confronting situation in my life and immediately I'm like, okay, where, when else have I seen this situation in my life? When in childhood have I felt this way? Immediately I go deep and do the work because that's why that confronting situation is coming up. It's not because life is supposed to be hard. It's because it's an opportunity to learn. So the more that I do that, the quicker I do that, the less those kinds of situations come, right? The more I liberate myself into being this, right? My chart, 
and allowing it, the more self-love I find. Right? And I'm, I'm able to dose myself. And we talked about neurotransmitters a lot yesterday. Right? Dopamine, serotonin, these are the positive neurotransmitters. Even oxytocin, can I snuggle with myself? <laughs> yeah? And so you just become so much more of a self-sovereign individual, not reliant upon being needy to your boyfriend or your mommy or whatever it is. Right? Because you fall in love with yourself and life becomes amazing. Because you are liberated and you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing rather than doing what people want you to do. This is back to the conversation from yesterday, shoulds. Right? Okay, you with me so far? Do you have your charts pulled up? You were like, no, I got so drawn into what you were saying. I, I stopped doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> so tell me if you need help. So, so the pattern is for later. Thank you for asking. Save the pattern for later. Y you, you'll spend hours with it and you'll really enjoy it. <laughs> and turn on, not I, I actually, yesterday, who already turned off their notifications from the lecture yesterday? Oh, none of you? You did? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Bravo, so welcome to the dopamine withdrawal cycle. Okay, know that you are deeply loved. Everyone give this woman a hug after class or a high five, okay? <laughs> But yeah, turning off your notifications is one of the most powerful ways to rebalance your neurochemistry. They're very, very damaging to the human psyche because they're attention grabbers, right? And they're also imbalancing your dopamine receptors. So um, pattern is something that I would recommend you actually have notifications on for because it will give you a daily reminder to take off the mask. Yeah? All right, great. So we're that far. So. Do you, who has their chart already pulled up? Okay, good, quite a few of you. Anyone need my help emergencerily? I like that word. No? Okay, if you need help right now, turn to one of your neighbors and say, will you help me? Huh? Okay, brilliant question. So house calculation, put whole sign. Everyone, that's really important. House calculation, put whole sign. Whole houses. Yes, awesome. Good question. No, no worries if you didn't. We're not going to get into houses today, um, but that's deeper. There's, your astrology chart is something that you can explore for the, your entire life. Was anyone at Levi's lecture yesterday or the day before on astrology? Very good, very good. Okay. All right, we ready to dive in? Yeah? Okay. So, our thesis, to just review, is that everything that we've said so far, yeah, is about psychosomatics, the conversation we're having with ourselves and how it will manifest in the body. Astrology, the astrological part of it, is looking at the influences at the moment of your birth which lie out for you, this whole set of lessons, right, explorations and soul purpose, things that you're supposed to be following, yeah? And it's our responsibility then to stay healthy and to follow what we're supposed to be following. It's like your path is right here, yeah? Okay, so cool. We start in the style of shamanic astrology with the moon. And so your moon sign, most of you should have, regardless of knowing your time. And the moon is where you've come from. Yeah, it's like one third of who you are. It's the deepest essence of your knowing. If you're someone who is open to reincarnation, it's an essence of past life knowing. Yeah. What you've already mastered, okay? So everyone knows where their moon is? Yeah? All right, so we're gonna go around. Who has moon in Aries? Oh, sorry, so I have to tell you the signs, right. <laughs> You're like, what? Aries? <laughs> Aries looks like this. Yeah? I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. I don't think you will. Okay. Yeah? Who has moon in Aries? All right. So right here, she's the warrior. She's the fighter. She's the one who's not afraid to go. My hand's up. This is very Aries. Yeah? Aries is it's in the sun sign. It's usually springtime, yeah? March, April. So, all right. Now, who has Taurus? So the thing is that in this roundabout, and I'll show you this, maybe you guys will be able to see it on here. This will be easier. 
here. It goes in a circle. So you see this circle? It starts with wherever your rising sign is, but essentially spring starts with Aries. And then it goes around to Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. Do you see this? Leo. So your circle will be the same. It will be rotated in one way or another. But essentially, it goes to counterclockwise, and it goes from one, two, three, four, five. So find the little symbol that is the moon. It's easy to know. Yeah, totally. For astro.com, you can also see it. All right, so Taurus is like the face with the bull head. Who has their moon in Taurus? Okay, so a master right here of beauty, embodiment. Yeah, master of the Aphrodite energy, luxury, embod like all sensuality. Yeah, You see how that's very different than our warrior princess over there? And you can kind of see it in them. The rest of their chart will color it. But like, look, look how many fabrics she's wearing. And you know, it's, it's, she's very beautiful. Like this is classic Moon and Taurus. Yeah? Yeah? Very good. Okay, so this is Taurus. I don't know the best way to write these, so I'll just write them across. Okay, so next up, you see we're going around the circle. Gemini, the twins. Who has their moon in Gemini? A lot of you, I think, haven't found it yet. So Gemini is the two. My teacher, Daniel G. Mario, says, we have to see what tribes have gathered here today. Yeah, when you have someone who has the same moon as you, it's often a past life knowing that you know them. Hmm? No one has their moon in Gemini. Good. Okay, we don't have any playful tricksters or troublemakers in here. <laughs> Some of you might have Venus and Mars in Gemini, so I'll hold my tongue. <laughs> None of you have been the experts yet. All right, next is Cancer. So this is the fish. You might know it, yeah? Like this. We have a moon in Cancer right here and there. Oh, very good. They kind of look alike. You see it? <laughs> yeah? There's a sensitivity. They've already mastered having been the mother. There's a deep caretaker. She's like, not me. <laughs> well, you might, you might give me that face because it's regressive for you. It's not progressive. Is anything else in the sign of cancer? Are there other planets? No, but she brought food. Yeah, she brought food for everyone. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. I love this conversation. <laughs> But you see where your moon is, and your moon is in this? I think so. Here, I'll look it up. It's here anyway. And it says moon in cancer. Okay, so your moon's in cancer. We can discuss it later. <laughs> your disowning of your mother archetype. <laughs> but do you feel sensitive? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so cancer feels the most out of any sign. It is the most sensitive. It's a water element. Yeah? All of these have different elements. So we can do an intro to astrology class later. I just want to do this little bit. We'll probably do maybe, uh, I'll, I'll show you what the archetypes are. And so right now we're looking at the moon, everyone. Look, moon. And then we're gonna look at Mars for men and Venus for women. Okay? That's all we're gonna look at today because it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to dive into. So, we're at number five, which is Leo. Leo moons? Oh, hello, Leo tribe. All right, so we're somehow like, we're multiplying. It was like one, one, two, three. <laughs> okay, so you guys look at each other and everyone look at them. There's a certain sense of that they're okay to be seen. There's a familiar, happy aspect to them. This is the archetype of Leo. It is the king or the queen. It's the open-hearted, loving leader. Uh, my Leo is rising, my ascendant, my sole purpose is Leo. So you'll see it in me too, yeah? So Moon and Leo, they've mastered having been the king, yeah, the one on top. All right, next. So we're going around the roundabout, follow me. The next is Virgo. Who has Virgo Moon? Oh, I love how you raised your hand. It was so Virgo Moon. <laughs> she literally went like that and then our beauty in the back was like <laughs> so 
<laughs> fantastic. All right, so two Virgo moon here. Interesting. I wonder if you guys also have Leo in your chart because of your hair. So this is another, I mean, when we look at the embodiment, the somatics of astrology, you see it in people. Like my big smile is very Leo, like, arr, like that lion kind of thing, yeah? So the curly hair, we have to look at the rest of your charts. But for now, Virgo is the designer. Virgo is the priestess. Virgo is the one who has amazing spatial awareness, a deep connection to nature, yeah? A lot of that hesitation, it is, again, the priest or the priestess. So it's like about doing things right. It's order, yeah? It's being in service to spirit. So you've mastered this art. Are you both good drawers? Is your handwriting nice? Is like no doubt. Yeah, they're both like, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah? All right, Virgo. So next, well, so we're moving on, move on with us, Libra. Libra looks like that. The scales, okay, only one. Oh, two, very good. So you guys have mastered being the partner. Yeah? Being the one who deeply knows, you know, the perfect girlfriend, the perfect kind of companion, the diplomat energy, the one who lives to make others happy, sometimes can go into codependency, things like this, yeah? So know that about you and be really proud, but the thing about Moon, everyone, is that we're not staying here. It's just what we were born having the expertise in. We're here normally to learn many different other things. Yeah, but you feel that inside of you, Libra Moons? Yeah, they're like, yeah, I wanna make you happy, yeah. <laughs> okay. So that, that's quintessential to Libra Moon. So next is Scorpio. This is my moon position. Who else? Where am I moon and Scorpio at? Only us? No one else has moon and Scorpio? Okay, hi. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You're jealous right now, I so. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. Moon in Scorpio is incredibly deep. It's a deep, deep knowing. The Scorpio energy in shamanic astrology is the shaman. It's the one who does the underworld work. It is vitality. It's life force energy embodied. Yeah? So one of my teachers once said to me, Andy, you have your fingers plugged into God sockets. It's that ability to conduct energy. And so some of you might have Venus or Mars in Scorpio. Yeah? Okay. So we'll go around, and it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's of no surprise that many of my best friends, if not most, have their moon in Scorpio, you know, because we meet and essentially, like instantly, there's this knowing, especially with Scorpio, it's a bit deeper than, than most. All right, next is Sagittarius. The Explorer. Oh, we got lots of moon in Sagittarius. Of course we do, it's a yoga festival. So look at each other, say hi. Okay, so there's definitely a Sagittarian archetype. They all look like they could go out for a hike right now, right? <laughs> there's like this go-getter, like I'm gonna go be a pioneer and explore. Yeah, do you guys like to travel? Yes. Yeah, we have lots of travelers here? Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is quintessential to Sagittarius, which is the spiritual teacher, the philosopher, the explorer, the traveler, and it's the one that knows many different subjects, just enough to be a great dinner table conversationalist. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's me. <laughs> yeah? So this is your moon sign, mind you. You go beyond here. So there's more beyond this. This is just like what you're really good at. It's not necessarily what you have to do. It's just like easy for you, yeah? Uh, yeah. Moon in Sagittarius? All right, very good. Hmm? How you're born. Yes, it's what you already knew deeply. And you know, you know when people say, hey, is there a doctor in the house? Yeah, and then everyone's like, oh, I'm a doctor, I can come. So this would be like, hey, is there an explorer in the house? Is there a pioneer in the house? And you would immediately come, exactly, yeah? How is the moon sign and the sun sign different? Very, very, very different. So the sun sign in shamanic astrology, what I practice is just the energy that recharges you. It's what gives back to you. It allows you to continue the next day. It's like your battery, yeah? You are not your sun sign at all. So we'll get into Venus and Mars. Only Moon, Mars, and Venus is what we'll do now. Okay? So let's finish this up. So we move from Sagittarius to Capricorn. This is my hardest one to draw. I'm really bad at drawing Capricorn. Moon and Capricorn. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. There's a knowing I love that with hands in your mouth. You're so Capricorn right now. It's this, so Capricorn is the manager. It's the CEO. It's the military general. It's the one who has their shit together. And he was like, <laughs> do you see it? You see it? So this is beautiful. I mean, anyone who was here yesterday and we talked yesterday about being able to listen and to know very deeply what's happening around us coming with curiosity. So when you can start to look through this lens, you can start to see things and listen how people are presenting, who they are, yeah? Great, so fantastic. So Capricorn, military general, CEO, that kind of like ordered. It's a teacher, but it's kind of like that wise, stern teacher. Um, and traditionally, the Capricorn energy is actually the circle of grandmothers. It's the wise elders. It's the one who are working on structure, strategy, and planning for the next seven generations. All right? So it occurs to me that what we should have done this whole time was actually also ask you about Venus and Mars. So anyone else have Venus or Mars in Capricorn? Okay. Okay, cool. So, so you guys, so we have some more organizers, some more military generals. You can learn from those with their moon in Capricorn how to master it. Oh, you see it? Okay. All right, we'll move on. Next is Aquarius. The age of Aquarius. Age of Aquarius. Moon in Aquarius? Where are my revolutionaries at? No one! There's no moon in Aquarius. Wow, okay. Anyone have Venus or Mars in Aquarius? Venus? Mars. Mars. Venus. Venus, okay. So revolutionary futurists, very good. The ones who are the bigger picture perspective, outside of the box thinkers, the eccentric ones that kind of you know show up and do what they want. And not in like a showy way, but like in a fun, just playful way. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so Aquarius, not a lot of Aquarius energy in the room, interesting. Uh, and then finally, last but not least, we have Pisces. Moon and Pisces. Oh, my artists, the mystics, the psychics, right here. You as well? Yeah, very quiet, very like here, <laughs> contained. The Pisces energy is the one that has done it all. They've been through all of this in the storytelling of the astrology. Once you get to Pisces, Right, you've experienced everything, and I'll review this. So notice where your Venus and Mars are, especially Venus for women and Mars for men. Aries, right? The fighter, the warrior, the man on the front line, the one who has a just cause and is defending the cosmic order. Yeah? Mars. Mars. Mars and Aries. Yeah, he's like, me, me. <laughs> That's me. Like, <laughs> Mars and Aries, very, very quintessential. I have Venus and Aries, so it's the Wonder Woman archetype, yeah? When that movie Wonder Woman came out, it was like a complete opening of my soul. For once, I had that archetype of the feminine outside of me reflecting back that it was okay to be fierce, yeah, and like be able to kick ass and strong and loud. Yeah, that's the Wonder Woman archetype. Because mind you, in the perfect prescription of human, what should a lady be? Ladylike. Ladylike, right? <laughs> she should sit here and she should cross her legs and she should be quiet and only speak when spoken to, yeah? She should do the dishes and make things for the kids. That is not who I am. <laughs> that is not who I am. And so if I can free myself from needing to be that way, all of a sudden, I become that much healthier. Do you see the psychosomatics part? Yeah? So like, I'm not gonna do the dishes. If I need to, I will, but I'm not, I'm just not that kind of dishes girl. We'll leave that to the moon and cancer. <laughs> okay, so next is Taurus. So once we've been the fierce warrior and we go and we say, wait, stop. Instead of doing so much, Aries, what if we just calm down and be? And be in our body and explore what it's like to be human. So Venus and Mars in, uh, or moon is fine, in Taurus. And your Venus is also in Taurus, so perfect example. Very good. Mars. Mars and Taurus, very good. Very good, perfect example. Venus. Venus and Taurus, okay. So yeah, so looking at exploring. And, and I would encourage you actually to like really do embodiment stuff. Uh, where's your Mars? Do you know? Cancer. Oh, in Cancer. Okay, so this is going to balance it out. We'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, so this is, you guys are Aphrodite, incarnated. Yeah? 
And the male version of Taurus is like this super reliable, steady, strong and steady, can continue, very grounded, very earthed. This is the energy of Taurus, yeah? So it's all about being. So once we come from Aries, doing, then it's like, wait, stop, slow down, be. What does that feel like to be? You see? This is the story. So we go from fire to earth to Gemini. So who's Venus, Mars, Gemini? Oh my God, no, we have no Gemini in this room. Venus. Of course, Venus and Gemini. So were you a tomboy when you were younger? A bit. Yeah, a bit, yeah? So playful trickster, yeah? The one who knows how to get around the rules because she knows the rules were made for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the little giggler. It said that the court jester, the Gemini, which do you have? Mars? Mars. Yeah, Mars and Gemini. Okay, so uh, the masculine side of you is showing up as this playful trickster, the one who needs to talk. Does she talk a lot? No. <laughs> <laughs> the one who needs to share. I mean, it's Gemini, it's the twins, right? It's that, that like communication back and forth. And so this energy of Gemini is, is really play. It's play. And so we go from doing to being to then being like, okay, well, let me stop going to the extremes and let me just play and see what happens. <laughs> yeah? So next, comes cancer and cancer is all about family it's about family it's about taking things under your wing and taking care so Venus or Mars and cancer all right so I'm here yeah. she's like I'll take care of you <laughs> yeah so this this energy of cancer is a water sign it's, it's the least developed of our water signs and cancer was also the example that we gave for breast cancer and resentment often mothers have that kind of like the shadow side of cancer is very very strong if you're with someone who's expressing the shadow side of cancer, you feel like you're walking on thin ice at all times. Like anything you say could offend them. Oh, they're laughing over there. <laughs> yeah? So, so the energy of cancer is one that um, is very, very, very sensitive. It's the crab inside of a shell. That hard outer shell and the very soft inside. And if you've seen a crab on the beach, often they scurry off to the side. They avoid confrontation. Yeah? So this is the cancer energy and it's all about being able to like know your place and your belonging and your family and your community taking care providing for others you get a lot out of giving so now I know all of you want to go and look up your best friends charts and <laughs> understand everything about them okay so so we've gone on this journey from the Aries the doer the Taurus the beer the Gemini the player the cancer the caretaker we'll go on to the Leo now in this maturation of different aspects or archetypes of humanity that we can explore, we go to being the leader, the one who says, look at me, I'm the center of attention. Yeah, the king of the kingdom, the master of one's own creation. Yeah, I am that I am, Leo, healthy Leo. Like a three-year-old in a backyard who the parents just say, yeah, go play. And they're like, well, today we have a tea party with, you know, it's that creating whatever you want, making it up as you go along. This is healthy Leo energy. Venus, Mars, Leo? Mars and Leo? No. Yeah? Mars and, okay, great. Fantastic. Yeah. Mars? Oh, okay. Wow. I, I want to bring that out of you more. Do you, do you do anything in leadership or? <laughs> I'm a big <laughs> And where's your Venus? Uh, okay, you look. You let me know. So this Leo energy is the regal, you know, the king. It, it's it's inherently hierarchical. You feel it? So it's like, what does it feel like to rule after doing, being, playing, caretaking? Now we are ruling and creating. Yeah. Next up, Virgo. Yeah. Venus and Leo, beautiful, yeah. So this is who you are, you are the queen. So the thing about Leo, I'll tell you the shadow sides as well, because mind you, if we're talking about psychosomatics, if you are expressing the shadow side, like for cancer, the resentment, yeah? Um, for Leo, it's being the center of attention and it's ego. And so it's no surprise that often Leo, Venus and Mars people are brought to yoga, because everyone has an ego, right? But people with Venus or Mars and Leo, the ego is like super swollen. And so you have to be super careful and aware of it. Yeah? And Leo is also the celebrity. Yeah? The one in the public eye. This, this energy of 
being seen. Yeah? Okay, so next is Virgo, Venus, Mars, and Virgo. You have Moon and Venus? Yeah. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, Venus. Venus, okay. Mm -hmm. And what was in Cancer, your Moon? No, your Mars. Cancer and Moon. Oh no, you had Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't even know. And I'm trying to remember everyone's. <laughs> Pisces Moon, okay. Um, Venus and Virgo, great. So these again are our artists. These are the ones who are exploring what it's like to be devotional. So if we have doing, being, playing, caretaking, um, creating, devoting, serving. Virgo's very much about being in service. Yeah, that's what the priest is. It's not about being the leader of the ceremony. It's making sure that the ceremony and the ritual and the tradition are preserved and it happens. Holding space for it. Understanding that Virgo, that you are the channel between heaven and earth. Okay. So, serving to Libra. Venus, Mars, and Libra. Okay, all right. What is it for you guys? Venus. Venus and Libra. Venus. Venus and Libra. Cool. So with major uh, Libra and Cancer signatures, like boyfriend, family, these are things that are very much for you. So that perfect prescription of human, of what it means to be a good girl, at least in the Western world, very much applies to you. Like it feels comfortable, it feels safe. Whereas for me, I don't have any Venus or Libra energy. I don't have any Cancer or Libra energy. So like that just doesn't feel resonant. So for you, you doing it, you'll be healthy. You'll be happy because you're living out your Dharma. For me, if I got married at the age of 25 and had kids and whatever, I would probably be really sick and crazy in the head because that's not what has been prescribed. Do you see it? <laughs> I don't know what for no wonder meant, I won't ask. <laughs> Do you see where we're going with psychosomatics and astrology? Fantastic, all right, you guys are doing great. So Libra is all about um, relationship, relating, relatedness. Yeah, being one-on-one -on -one normally, whether that's in a coaching session or whether that is as the diplomat. It's Order relating. Hmm? Libra, relating. <coughs> Do you want me to write the words? Or write the words. Doing, yeah. being, playing. Well, that was supposed to be an L. <laughs> playing. Then this is caring or providing. And, this, and I'm just making these up. I mean, there's so many words that we could use for this, but if we have to limit it down to one. Leo, Leo would be Leo. Um, Leo. leading, creating. I almost want the energy of creating more. So creating or making it up as you go along. Um, this is definitely serving. And then this is going to be relating. Awesome. So these are the major themes explored by these signs. And mind you, I'll review, your moon is what you've already mastered. You've mastered it in this lifetime. Your Venus and Mars are your lessons. It's what you're here to be learning and exploring. You see? So next we have Scorpio, Venus, Mars, Scorpio. Oh yes, sexual gods and goddesses, only goddesses, no Mars and Scorpio. Okay, so Scorpio again, the shamanic energy. The deep, dark underworld, it's a lot like Pluto, which is death and rebirth. It's death, yeah? It's that energy harnessed through the body. It's going to the edge of aliveness for aliveness's sake. Intensity, yeah? So we'll write the word intense. And it is, it, it can be archetypically the witch or the warlock. Your Venus is in Scorpio? Yeah? Do you identify with a witch? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it has a negative connotation, right? Because of the witch trials, the Salem witch trials. He's like, no, I love witches. <laughs> Bring on the witches. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, these are all just words, right? And as you heard me say yesterday, the moment we say words, it's like we're lying. It's not, nothing's true except silence. That's a very Scorpio thing for me to say. <laughs> Moon and Scorpio, yeah. But uh, if we look at the, the exploration of where we're going here, we first, in the human story, so this is beyond you, the human story of the zodiac is, okay, we're alive, do, what can we do? Yeah, 
what needs to be done? You know, that kind of energy. And then like, wait, let me just slow down and be, and wow, I have a body. What does that feel like? Yeah. And then like, oh, there's other people here. <laughs> Let's play and share and talk. And then, oh, those other people might need caretaking. Let me see what it would be like to make more humans and have family, right? And then, wait a minute, now that there are many people, <laughs> many families, what would it be like if I could rule them all and create whatever I want, yeah? And then it's like, oh wait, but those humans aren't real, only God is real. Or any other God type that you, that you would quote. So this Virgo, you're following me and she's giggling because she feels it inside, she knows. Like it's being in service to spirit, right? I'm only here for the higher purpose. It has nothing to do with me, yeah? And then um, we go to relating, and it's like, okay, wait, but those humans are still there. I can't ignore them. I tried to rule them. I tried to provide them. Okay, I'm going to be in partnership with them. And Libra is all about conscious, equal partnership and relating. All right? Next, it's like, wait a minute. I just did a lot of stuff, and none of it's real. All of it is maya, as we say in yoga. Illusion. <laughs> it's illusion. The only thing that's real is when I close my eyes. Oh, yeah. I feel it so deep inside of me, right? That's the intensity, the energy, the God current. It's being a circuit for that, that is Scorpio, right? All right, so we're up to Sagittarius. Venus, Mars, Sagittarius. Okay, I see it, I love it. You're Mars and Sag. Okay, great, me too. Did you have a crush on your teachers or your professors growing up? <laughs> She's blushing. I'm sure it's some, yes. <laughs> yeah, me too. That, so that's classic. For women, your Mars is the energy that you would want from outside of you. You look and you search. So women, check where your Mars is. Men, check where your Venus is. You search and you tend to be drawn to that kind of man or woman outside of you. Does this feel resonant? Yeah? So like I was, I was like seven years old and I had a crush on my teacher, Mr. Acton, you know? Is it All strange that my partner is a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> is he pro a professor? Yeah, so, so it's not strange, it's perfect. <laughs> she not only had the crush when she was little, but she married the professor. <laughs> you know, there's no problem with that. I like guys who are professors too. But the thing is, what we have to do, and especially this is from shamanic astrology, is create what's called a sacred marriage. And within the two parts of ourselves, our Mars and our Venus marry them. And we have to realize that the professor's inside of us. Right? I, I am the professor. I don't need to marry one. You see that? And when I can fall in love with that exploratory, pioneering, you guys with Moon and Sagittarius, you remember this, the traveler, when I fall in love with him inside of me, I don't need anyone outside of me, or I can be with anyone because I'm not looking for them to be a certain way. Do you see that? That was really important, what I just said. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for them to be a certain way because all my desires, which are here for my Mars and my Venus, I've fulfilled them. So they can just be them. I can allow them to be them. And I can be fully me. Do you see that? That's big. Because that's the next step of all of this. Psychosomatics and astrology, it's about letting ourselves be us. And when we can let ourselves be us and be seen for who we are, or who we are meant to be, we can also let others be them. And we stop all of these unconditional demands upon them. Do you, does this make sense from yesterday? You're getting it now? My dad, dude? <laughs> Mars and Aries, what's your name? I'm just a fairy. Who is she? I want to understand her. All right. Okay, so you have a lot to learn about that mystical energy from her. We'll get to Pisces in a second. So relating, intensity, exploring. So now that we've seen, you know, everything with people and hierarchy and not hierarchy and relating and like then closing our eyes and being like, oh God, none of it's real. But this feeling, this energy, this prana inside of me is the only thing that's real, Scorpio, mm -hmm. right? Then we're, we open our eyes again and we're like, wait a minute. But there's a world, yeah. there's a planet, there's different countries, there's different worldviews, there's ideas, there's philosophies, yeah. right? So we go and explore them. You see, this is the story of what's going on. All right, so we got our, our Venus, my, my Mars is in Sag, Mars and Sag, and one other person, Mars and Sag, yeah. And no men with Mars and Sag, right? Oh yeah, very good, are you guys together? 
Yeah? Okay, so great. So she's, she's exporting her Mars and Sag. He's the ideal kind of man. You see that? And just like when you married the professor, same kind of thing. You see, it's no mistake. <laughs> okay, now we go to my not so wonderfully drawn Capricorn. <laughs> so Capricorn is the mountain goat. Has anyone ever seen a mountain goat? Do you know what I'm talking about? The go <laughs> goat that climbs up a mountain. They're absolutely incredible. They go directly vertical and they have hooves. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> but somehow, they are so, so driven and so like resilient, that's the word, yes, that they do it. And so this is the energy of Capricorn. It's the worker, the hard worker, the one whose dharma is work, right? The one who is here to be able to work on structure, strategy, and planning for the next generation. Right? The wise elder. So what should we say here? Wisdom, structure, planning, strategy. I think planning or structure. structure. Let's say structure. So now that we've created this whole world and we've done all this stuff and we've explored it, now we're like, well, how are we going to organize it? Right? How are we going to make sure that it's safe for the next people who are born into it? How do we create governments and institutions? And I'm going to take a side note here, so we're a side note, okay? Next year, 2020, is a very, 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 very big year, astrologically. All of the outer planets, Pluto, Mars, oh, uh, sorry, Pluto, Uranus, Jupiter, and Neptune, not Mars, that's an inner planet, all of these planets which are generational, they're very slow moving, so they're not gonna dictate your personality so much. All of those planets are aligning in the same part of the sky in Capricorn. Yeah, this hasn't happened for 700 something years. Yeah, and, and then at one point Mars in March will join them. <laughs> and Mars is the actionary planet, all in Capricorn. Well, it means that you're going to emotionally feel a lot of what happens next year. So, so she just took us one level beyond. From our natal chart and a normal natal chart reading, you can go into transits. As the planets move around this roundabout that you have in front of you, where they are today is going to affect how you feel on any day. So time passages, all of these apps have different things. The pattern is built off of your transits. It will tell you what you're meant to be experiencing. And, and you'll be like, well, what was it? What's his name? Tatum? Channing Tatum? I don't, I don't actually know who that is. Do you know who that is? Okay, so this famous person <laughs> got on his YouTube channel after he downloaded the pattern and was like, what is this shit? How does it know everything about me? This was, <laughs> this was in June and his millions of followers immediately went and downloaded the pattern, which is off my astrology teacher's wisdom, right? And it crashed the app, <laughs> right? But it's, it's that quality of like, it, this stuff is true. For anyone with Sagittarius energy, this is the exploration of truth. It's the quest for truth. Astrology is true. We just can't deny it. It's not like someone's opinion, right? Because all of you are nodding, and you're fe who's, who's feeling resonant with their Venus and their Mars and their Moon? Yeah? Anyone not feeling resonant? You're like, I do not have Moon in Leo. No, no one, okay? So it's like, it's common, and I mean, if I told you, Wijman, you have lots of Virgo, right? Virgo? Virgo, Libra, what was your other? Aries. Aries, okay. So if I told you that you're meant to be the uh, visionary mad scientist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah? Well that's also, okay. <laughs> we'll talk. But essentially, I don't know your rising sign, so I can't say fully. But essentially, like if someone told me I was meant to be like the mother, caretaker, girlfriend, I'd be like, no, <laughs> sorry, you know, it, where it just doesn't fit. And so this is where we come into self-knowledge, when you allow yourself to be what's been prescribed for you, and you celebrate the parts of you that maybe you quieted down because they weren't fitting into the perfect prescription of humans. Right? And you get to know yourself every day. And this is what I tell people that I give readings to. It's like you're a ball of yarn. And you know yourself as the ball of yarn. I know it's a silly analogy unless you're a cat. Okay? <laughs> so you're a ball of yarn. 
and you know yourself as this ball of yarn. So who am I to tell you anything about you? Right? Many of the people I give readings to, I've never met or seen them. They just order a reading from me, they send me money, and I send them a recording in voice. You know? And they're crying during the recording, and they send me a message back that's like, I can't believe it. I, you've never even met me. You know, that kind of thing. Because what we're doing is we're unthreading the ball of yarn, and we're taking out each individual thread and looking at these parts that make you up. And there are more parts than this, but these are the three important ones that we can find out from not having your birth time. Yeah? Make sense? Okay. Time check. We're almost over. So, structure, Capricorn, you get it? Wise elder, grandmother energy. What is my mind mark with the Capricorn? So that's what you would look outside of you. You're looking for a man who has his shit together. But you have to realize that you are the CEO, that you are in control of your life, that you have wisdom inside of you. And then any man who comes can be with you. If he's like Gemini and like doesn't care about society and the loser, you probably won't be with him because you value so much being organized and collected. But, do you understand? Yeah? Okay. So, so, okay, so a lot of Capricorn energy here. Yeah. So uh, you've already mastered it and you're exploring it in a new way. Yeah? With your moon there and then with your Mars there. Where's your Venus? So Venus and Pisces, so that they're very, very, very different energies, Capricorn and Pisces, yeah? And so with the Capricorn, it's all about structure and grounding and earth and, um, again, that, that like planning, you, you're always on time for things, yeah, yeah. And Pisces is head up in the clouds. It's like the dreamer, the singer-songwriter, the painter, you know? So they're very different energies and you're integrating them both, yeah? There's nothing wrong with that, it's exciting. <laughs> you gotta explore them. And for a lot of Pisces, because Pisces, especially since the 1960s, Pisces hasn't really been celebrated. It's not an energy that this perfect prescription of human contains. Right? We'll get there in a second and I'll tell you about that. But let's go to Aquarius first. Venus or Mars in Aquarius? Okay, all right, my brilliant ones. Yeah, me the intellectual elitist with Con sun conjunct Mercury in Aquarius. I'm like, all right, those are the smart people I have to talk to. Yeah, but Aquarius is this brilliance. Everyone's like, wait, I'm smart too, though. <laughs> yeah, you're smart too, okay. <laughs> but they're really smart. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. So the thing about Aquarius is that it is the astrologer. It is the one who looks at the greater, bigger picture, the order of how things are, and starts to understand it from that very emotionally removed perspective. I highlight emotionally removed. A shadow side of Aquarius is that there is no shadow side. <laughs> you see that? Because everything's perfect, and it's exactly as it should be. No, it's not that there is one. The shadow is that they don't <laughs> think there's a shadow. Do you see that? <laughs> it's bypassing, spiritual bypassing. Yeah? Staying so much high up in the higher meditative states and all of these kinds of things. Yeah? So uh, it is the, the Albert Einstein, that, that, that mad scientist. It is the revolutionary. Yeah? You're Mars in Aquarius? Uh, yeah? yeah? You dress the part. I like it. <laughs> Where's your Venus? Uh, Venus and Taurus, okay, so that's why you dress the part. He's like, okay, I gotta show up as like a really good mad scientist. I gotta look good as a mad scientist. You know, it's not like, like, if you look at him, there's a caption, looking good as a mad scientist. <laughs> the glasses are almost kind of Sagittarius. Where was your moon? Pisces. Okay, moon and Pisces, interesting. Very interesting dynamics that you're working with. So see, the thing is that these are all like ingredients. It's like, this is ginger, that's cumin, this is pepper, right? That's sugar. And all of you have, di and that was, cancer would not be the sugar. Maybe it would, I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> you have all, that was very biased from me. You have all different ingredients that make you up the recipe of human that you are. And so it's just about being able to fully taste yourself, yeah? And noticing that if someone has a lot of pepper, <laughs> They're a spicy dish, like letting them be spicy, not telling them they should calm down more. 
You see that? That's really big to understand. <laughs> All right, good. So we're understanding the compassion that I talked about yesterday, especially with like your parents, letting them be who they are. Yeah? Discovering, listening, caring about who they are. All right, next is Pisces. So finally, Pisces is the one who's gone through all of this, and that's when we went back to the story. They've done everything, been everywhere, tried all these different varieties of being human, and at the end of the day, all they want to do is sit down and meditate in a cave. <laughs> that's, that's your Piscean. Maybe sometimes... <laughs> and you know, it's, it's the Reiki healer. It's the painter that's like very Van Gogh. Yeah, it's not a structured painting like a Virgo would paint. It's a very mystical, whimsical kind of painting. You see that? It's the most evolved of the water signs. And it's psychic abilities. Because the mind is so high up dancing with the divine that sometimes it's hard to come back down here on earth. It's the channeler. The one who like, you know, speaks aliens and things like that. <laughs> yeah? It's the psychic. So Venus and Mars and Pisces? Cool. Oh. Yeah, we got lots of Pisces in this room. And again, it's a, it's, a, it's a yogic thing, right? Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius. These are the kind of energies that are often drawn to yoga, right? Because in, in yoga, you're able to be in the mystical state. Is that my alarm clock to say it's over? My class is over? <laughs> That'd be great if students set alarms. So, um, <laughs> it's like the bell. So my Piscean energies, I'll, I'll spend some time talking about it. I mean, the... The Piscean energy, it, it's high, normally. And then you make it do work, or get a job, or make money, or have responsibilities, and stuff gets really hard. Yeah? Because you know that you're supposed to be here in this other mystical realm, and somehow people are like, be here on Earth! Where are you? Your head's in the clouds. Oh. You see that? And so the shadow side of Pisces is addiction. Yeah, because the Piscean people, their head's so up in the clouds, they don't want to come back down here on Earth. That when they have to come back down here on Earth, all of a sudden, it's difficult. And so they want to find some substance that they can take or drink that will help them get back to dancing with the divine. Make sense? Venus and Pisces? So, I mean, Venus and Pisces is this, this chiffon-wearing... Um, Reiki healer, like artist, singer, songwriter, the one who's here to, to really communicate. The job of Pisces is to communicate the incommunicable, the divine. How do you communicate God, the divine? You can't. So you do it through song or dance or poetry or mysticism or channeling. You see that? And if you're not able to do it, then you feel. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I mean, I would recommend anyone with Venus or Mars and Pisces to have some kind of outlet of, I don't want to say creation, because it's not creativity necessarily. It's like, a di it's like a passive creativity. It's being creative through them. They need a, an outlet. Just like Scorpio, Venus or Mars and Scorpio needs an outlet for the intensity. Yeah? So both my parents have Mars and Scorpio. Yeah? My mother and my father. Thankfully, when they retired, my father started cycling and now he cycles competitively and really far and so that's his outlet for all the energy that's coming through so maybe at home he won't yell so much you see and my mother started playing the ukulele music guitar things are really good for both Pisces and Scorpio yeah to put that motion into something they're both water signs you know? for cancer to have a family to have someone to caretake I tell women with Venus and cancer that your life won't start to make sense until you have kids it's also the entrepreneurial energy for anyone who's denying the family. Where was my, right there. Are you an entrepreneur? Snacks lady. <laughs> Are you an entrepreneur? Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> no? You know her? I started teaching this year. Okay, but do you have your own business? No, I do it for other people, but it's not. not so you're teaching for other people? Okay, so at our 10 year reunion, I want to see where you go with your life, because birthing something new into the world is a big part of, of your existence. You, you only had moon in Cancer? Where are your Venus and Mars? Uh, Aquarius, Venus, moon, Aquarius, and Mars in Cancer. Okay, okay. 
This is why she's like family. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. Very interesting. All right. More on that later. Question. Yes. If you have both Venus and Mars in Pisces. Uh huh. Is that you? Yes. Okay. Cool. So he's like, what do I do? <laughs> I was just dating a guy who had Venus and Mars and Pisces, and he, he, he's like starting to explore this whole world, and I was very much there to show him a little bit about like crystals. Have you ever owned crystals? I own crystals for Pisces. Okay, so, so, so check them out for yourself, right? Check into the ways in which you have psychic abilities, and you've shut them down because society doesn't tell them that they're real, doesn't tell you that they're real. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's who you are, right? It's what you've been dealt. It's the card you have. It's the recipe that you're tasting of yourself. And so you can be daunted by it and make this face, uh, right? Or you can decide to fall in love with it and be like, okay, these are my cards. I'm going to learn how to play them. Do you see? Yeah? Venus, 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 Venus. Your Mars is what you will export onto men, or even in uh, homosexual relationships, you still look at the Mars for a woman, and the Venus for a man. Yeah, and so like the last thing I'll say on the Venus and Mars especially is um, the sacred marriage is a process whereby you look at your Venus and Mars archetype next to one another, and you imagine them as a couple. Where would they do, where would they go? Where, where, so someone who hasn't talked yet or told me anything about their chart, raise your hand. What do you have, Venus and Mars? Venus and Virgo. Mars and Taurus. Okay, great. So Virgo and Taurus, guys. So do this with me. So Virgo, Venus and Virgo, she is the priestess. She's here to be in service to spirit, to God. Your life is for someone else. And, and maybe, maybe you come to be righteous sometimes. You know what you're talking about. Is this your partner? Aquarian man, yeah? Is she sometimes righteous? She knows what she's talking about. <laughs> but she's like, I do! <laughs> All right, so Venus in Virgo, and your Mars was in Taurus. So the other part of you is like, well, I, I don't care. <laughs> like, Taurus is just about like mm, being in the body and having good food. Does she like good food and wine? Yeah. So, so now it's your responsibility. What's your name? Billy? Billy? So it's your responsibility to integrate those two parts of you, Venus in Virgo, this goddess, right? I'm sorry, not goddess. Well, she's a kind of goddess. She's a priestess, yeah? She's like the, male, the female version of a priest. You understand priestess, yeah? So she's right next to Mars in Taurus, which I can show you a picture of my poster child, Mars in Taurus. Um, it's like... It's the man who's wearing the toga with the long flowing hair and he's gorgeous and he's being fed the grapes. You know, this energy of just like sitting back and relaxing and being sensual with the body and enjoying the finer pleasures of life. So what does she say to him? What does he say to her? How do they get along? Where do they go together? What do they do together? Because this is a conversation that's always happening inside of you. Does that make sense? So all of you can do that for your own Venus and Mars archetypes. So we'll finish it off because I know we're at time and I think there's someone coming in. And I know you guys want to do this for the rest of your lives, right? <laughs> like, give me more, give me more. Wait till we get into rising sign and your Mercury and the house placements. <laughs> so um, Mars in, or sorry, just anything in Pisces, what should our word be? Dream. Dream, I like that. Or channel, dream or channel? Because a dream is like false, right? Yeah, yeah. Channel. 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 All right, the channel. So there we have it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> this is your little, and you can come up after and take pictures of it, no problem. Um, this is your little introduction to psychosomatics and astrology. Uh, there is so much more we could do from here. Um, I do have a few other astrology videos on and I can, I can do on social media anything that you guys want. So you just write me and tell me what you want. 
Um, anyone who, uh, who wants a reading, I, one of my major desires in this lifetime is to democratize astrology, so like to teach you how to do this for yourself, and then if you want my input, I sell very inexpensive, small recordings of my voice that I'll just send you, and then we don't have to get into the whole hour of sitting down. I, mean, I do that too with some people, but it's a 